teach to the goal, right? I mean, uh, I've taught a little bit on this before, but the goal shouldn't be doing math today. The goal should be preparing our students. So when they turn 18, what do, I, what do they need to have to go to college? Or what do they need to have to go to trade school or to live life successfully? Before we just say the child is lazy, we also have to look at some other factors like um, their attention span. Are they spending a lot of time on a computer? Are they watching YouTube? Are they watching TikTok? Are they playing video games? Because if that's happening, their ability to focus is is like being destroyed I and mean, it's not academic achievement in kindergarten it's developing the whole brain the body it's more of a holistic approach preparing them for academic success who cares about what everybody else is doing do what's right for your student week we're having an okay week we're having a fantastic week mm -hmm. sounded awful hey <laughs> believable yeah we're sorry it's a little yeah, having an okay week. week ah all right hey we got a lot of a lot to answer a lot of questions to answer which i'm excited by um before i do answer questions if you're going to the nashville show we're looking forward to seeing you guys there uh, we've got uh, two trucks going. We've got Anna is going and Jessica's going and Kristen and I are going to be there with some of the boys and, and Tim Dudley's going to be there. So we're looking forward to seeing everybody and uh, it's kind of the Teach Them Diligently show in Nashville is kind of our family big deal uh, for conventions. So, okay. Are you ready? Happy Mardi Gras. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Let's let's go with questions. All right. Go. Melissa Cap said, "In looking at the high school electives, what are your two absolute faves?" My two favorites to prepare a student for life is um, logic. I would definitely take logic, and I would do comparative religions and cults, um, especially when you look at a lot of church. Uh, you could go to a church that's Christian, or you could go to a curriculum that calls themselves Christian, but if you don't really know. Um, the foundations of some of the other religions that have seeped in to Christianity, uh, it can be dangerous. And something I'm, I, I'm not going to talk about this week because it won't be here Thursday, but the following week I want to talk about uh, the dangers of, of kids. You know, we just saw a video that Rhett and Link, two, two uh, Christian YouTubers that we used to follow, have just, what is it, deconstructed their faith and walked away from the faith. Our kids need to know how to deal with that. So those are the two that I would really recommend uh, to anybody who's searching for my top two. Awesome. Sarah Bates says, does Masterbooks have future plans to release audiobook options for the courses? At some point. Right now we have enough holes that we have to fill with physical, the, the regular books, um, and audiobooks traditionally, even though there's a need for them, traditionally they don't... Um, they don't sell as well, mm -hmm. so they're not, they, they, they're, they'll be a secondary product. Sarah Gonzalez said, best signs for younger hands-on type sixth grade boy. Hands-on sixth grade boy. Um, I would probably go with something like uh, the big uh, sea soil sky is the name of one. Um, or the zoology course, it's a little bit not as structured, uses real world books and, and more in line with that. I would probably go more with those courses um, than the God's Design, which is awesome and has hands-on experiments and all of that, but, but is um, a little more rigorous, I would right. say. Over in the app quick, Miss Chrissy said, I'm planning um, for next September and would like to know if I can use language lesson six along with writing strands for my daughter that is starting sixth grade. And what would you recommend for fourth and sixth grade science that I can combine? So I would, I would do the placement tests on language lessons for living education, make sure that they're ready. Um, I personally don't think that you need to do both writing strands and language lessons, but you could if you wanted to. I just realized we were both rocking side to side. <laughs> da, 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 da. Why is that? I don't know. We just looked up and we were both going. <laughs> it's kind of rough seas so... today. The wind is blowing. <laughs> Blow my hair straight back. <laughs> Okay. Um, Jessica over, or no, Leah in the Facebook Live said, officially our first day of homeschooling. Thank you for these videos. Awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Don't um, give up. Don't give up. Stay, mm -hmm. 
stay the course no matter what. Elena said, one last sample of language lessons one be on the website. Tomorrow. Awesome. Summer Higgins Kelmer said, we are considering using a few Masterbooks courses in our homeschool co-op next year. What is the proper etiquette for using Masterbooks in co-op? Will Masterbooks ever consider a co-op price for downloadable courses? Uh, we want to give credit where credit is due, especially if it is a larger class. Okay. Co-ops, that's a good question. And I don't have a good answer for you. I'm not well versed in co-ops or the academy model. So let... Um, Let's let's give me give me a bit to explore that. Let me put some questions out to the group on people who do use it as co-op and find some experts in co-ops. Uh, this week, I'll try at the Nashville show to talk to some people that participate in co-ops. And I know it's a need, so I will work to serve that need. Awesome. Angela said we're making her motion sick. Uh, Heather Anderson said, I love the concept of doing history as a family, but is World Story too much for a third, fourth grader to do with an older sibling? Should I have the older one go on to World Story independently and do America Story with younger ones? Um, she said, also, I know the worksheets would be likely too much for the younger one, but I'm wondering more about the overall content of World Story. Yeah, you could certainly do it where you did it as a family read aloud and then discuss some things. I would I would say be careful in the content, use discretion. I know as you move into the world story, um, some of the topics and the discussions may be a little bit more mature, not not terribly mature, so to speak. They're not PG thirteen, but they might be a little bit much for a third grader. So. Um, you would want to use discretion with that and read ahead and know where you were. But you could do multi-age, I, absolutely. I mean, the read-alouds, the discussion, you're going to get so much value from that if, uh, as, as a family discussing history. I'm over in the app. Danielle said, my daughter hates the come up with sentence directions in language three. Anything to get her imagination going? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. I never had a problem being creative with imagination. My problem was usually staying, not being too creative. Mm -hmm. We once had, we played a game in our family about how you would have a baby at Walmart, <laughs> right? And the person who could go on the longest without, without saying stopping. um or stopping. Yeah. I mean, I was like six minutes. I was. We were just moving through the house. Where's I? Yeah, all the benefits of yeah. Having why a baby you want to have a baby at the, at the checkout, the register, all kinds of stuff. The I mean, snacks I never had you'd have available. I think some kids have going. a harder time with being a little more imaginative. Maybe give them some starters, give them some teases, and and then when when they do, really reward that. Okay, um, Jenny said audiobook options would be awesome. And I know there were some questions on whether or not we'll ever do audiobooks. Yeah, we answered it. They're coming. Okay. I mean, at some point, yes. Yes. Um, uh, is the content not the work in America's story and world story too much for a six year old? She is very intrigued with history. I don't think. I don't think it's too much. Um, well, world world story is designed. For, which which world story? If it's the world story, um, yeah, because the other is world history. Yeah, that's designed for grade six, seven, and eight. So as long as uh, you you should be fine with world story in six. Um, Anison said we recently decided to come back to Masterbooks after using a rigorous curriculum that made our homeschool days so stressful. We only left Masterbooks the first time because I panicked we weren't doing enough. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice you can give a mom who has anxiety that the more rigorous it is, the more educational it must be? By the way, my son loves Masterbooks. My anxiety is the only reason we swapped. Teach to the goal, right? I mean, uh, I've taught a little bit on this before, but the goal shouldn't be doing math today the goal should be preparing our students so when they turn 18 what do I what do they need to have to go to college or what do they need to have to go to trade school or to live life successfully find out what the requirements are for high school what you know by by grade nine they need to be able to do algebra so anybody when people say to me oh you know my first grader isn't doing enough <laughs> okay but they don't have to do algebra next year they don't have to do algebra until ninth grade so the math lessons is more of a, a gentle scope and sequence. But let me tell you, by the time you hit seventh or eighth grade in principles of mathematics, you're, you're going to be extremely challenged and ready for algebra, one of the best algebras on the market, Jacobs. Um, so 
I think sometimes our fear comes because it's like this week we're going to Nashville, Kristen and I and the boys. And if I just said, hey, we're going to Nashville, woo, I think it's in that direction. I would have a lot of anxiety about that. And, and after about an hour of traveling, my anxiety would continue to intensify and it would keep happening because I'd have no clue. I'd just kind of be going on gut instinct. Sometimes in homeschooling, we do the same thing. We just try to navigate this without really having a roadmap. So take the time to sit down and write out a roadmap. Now it may change. You may find out there's a detour here or there, but don't go blind. And, and we know what a student needs, right? You need you know, four years of math, four years of language, three to four years of science, three to four years of history. You need to have phys ed and fine arts and, you know, some electives. And so as you're preparing them, are they prepared to step into that at the high school levels? And, and can, they, can they communicate effectively? And then, and then you, once you know the goal, then you can point the car in the right direction and start going there. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing because they're not raising your kid. They don't know. I don't know how to raise your kid. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of, I love this word, personal science. Thank you, Angela Dell, um, that goes into our, our personal lives and our kids where we have to, we have to be willing to, to make some hypotheses, test it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, go back to the lab and, and redo it. So, um, that's that's my recommendation. I, I would love to have this talk more. And so we will be unpacking this more as we go unpacking. That's a Jeremy word. We'll be unpacking this more. Jeremy is our pastor, year. for those of you who don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, Jessica said, my husband said I could homeschool our kids this fall. My oldest will be a seventh grader then. She's used to common core math. Would you suggest I buy the seventh grade math or basic package with the math that you have in the package or should I start her on something easier? She's really good at math, so maybe she would be fine. Do the placement test. The, the, it's a readiness test, right? But it'll tell you if you're ready to go to the next level. That's the best way to know. And, and don't worry. I mean, just yeah that's the best way do the readiness test don't don't try to guess your way around it because common core you know there may be some changes that they have to relearn some things and that should also answer elizabeth your question over in the app kind of, we're kind of bouncing back and forth between all the questions today we have so many that were put in the original post so we're just trying to hit as many as we can and we're trying to race through them bang, yeah bang, bang. jessica said how do you determine if your child is being lazy or if they are embarrassed because they truly don't understand something and therefore won't ask for help really struggling with my 11 year old boy right now in every subject and i border on he is lazy example he misses his spelling words but won't write them five times to learn them or practice them yeah it's a hard it's a hard line um I mean, if if they don't put anything into it, sometimes you have to assume that it is a lack of motivation. But before we just say the child is lazy, we also have to look at some other factors like um, their attention span. Are they spending a lot of time on a computer? Are they watching YouTube? Are they watching TikTok? Are they playing video games? Because if that's happening, their ability to focus is is like being destroyed right. and so then when we want them to focus for an hour on schoolwork when the rest of the day they're they're not building that skill like deep work requires practice and we really have to step back from being entertained like so many hits of dopamine so many different distractions i find it myself you know i'll i'll be social media all the time and then all of a sudden i need to sit down and actually start going through my emails and my brain struggles to to go into the deeper work so i wouldn't necessarily just assume he's lazy and he's not doing his work look also at the environmental side of that study a little bit about focus and developing focus because especially at that age i mean what boy can focus but Beyond that, if there's a lot of that work going on, um, I know with one of my sons, same thing, uh, you want to make sure that you limit that and begin developing focus-based skills. Awesome. Summer said, do you have an estimated timeline um, for the release of the remaining math backs flashcards? Yeah, we, we're going in the triangular pattern with the other flashcards. Um, so I'm hoping that we can get on that project um, to be available probably end of March, beginning of April. Both well, Anna, well, Samantha and Jessica said, my daughter is currently in public school, kindergarten, thinking she is switching to master books for first grade. How long is a school day? Is there anything I should know? 
our school days, what we use for, for like our kindergarten programs is more developmental and it's more based on what you, the parent, believe is best for your student, not overwhelming them. It's not academic achievement in kindergarten. It's developing the whole brain, the body. It's more of a holistic approach preparing them for academic success. Clarissa said, my five-year-old loves math level K. We are three-fourths way through. She has all the concepts down except the season. She struggles with matching the picture to the right season. I am wondering if um, I should not move on to level one because of that or just keep working with her. I keep reviewing it. I am not sure what to do about math next year if I don't move on. I don't know that I would keep moving because of that, but I would continue just working at some of the seasons. Like maybe that just isn't clicking but looking for other ways to help that click unless there's um you know a greater issue that's that's displayed it just may not be clicking the 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 necessary seasons but living what season are we in today how do we prepare for the next season um seasons around the world you know different things like um we know when it snows in some parts of the country it's christmas season I don't know that I wouldn't move on just because of that. Um, maybe Angela could weigh in. I know she's answering some questions too. Yeah. Um, Jennifer said, how do you know they are doing enough? My son is in ninth grade and it takes him 30 minutes to complete a day's worth of assignments in writing strands, U.S. history, and science altogether. I'm afraid 30 minutes of work isn't beneficial. He's getting everything correct also. She said that she's using writing strands intermediate one and applied engineering. Okay, so I would, I, I think that's a really good question. Um, I don't have enough information. So my first assumption would be, um, I would assume math, you know, you're doing a math curriculum, maybe not our math, but a math curriculum as well. If you look at, if you, if you look at a typical ninth grade homeschool day, it's about seven hours. I looked at a schedule. I did it earlier just to verify. I knew what I was talking about. Here's, here's the schedule. They get to school about 830. They leave around three, whatever. Um, and, and how many hours of instruction is a ninth grader actually doing? They do about three and a half to four hours of classroom time. The rest is study hall, lunch, um, break meetings, uh, extra activities, student activities. Okay, and then when you really dig into that, so if I'm in the classroom, math is my first subject, and I'm in the classroom 45 minutes, we've got to figure that probably 5, 10, 15 minutes is dead time. It's not really time where there's instruction in that. So in the course of a day in a public school for a ninth grader, actual classroom time instruction would probably be, you know, two to four hours depending on the student okay and and in that though if with looking at it takes your student 30 minutes i would say well maybe they're advanced and if they're advanced then you're going to want to give them either uh, you know you're going to want to double up the work let them go faster give them some more challenging work um, like, let's read the classics. I mean, let's let's start reading through um, the religious classics. Let's start reading through Pilgrim's Progress. Let's start going through some more complicated literature. Like, if you're doing writing strands, <coughs> you don't have to do reading, writing, reading, writing. You could do combined. So, hey, we're going to read and write the same week, and we're going to bang this off a little faster because you're capable of it. Who cares about what everybody else is doing. Do what's right for your student. On the flip side, and I have students who are into both, some, the, some students give one word answers. They're not, they don't do the work up to the level of a high school student unless I'm not writing them and Kristen's writing them. And so in that case, we need to be like in writing strands. Did they actually write a really good paragraph? And, and each time that they're doing it, are they investing themselves? Are they using complete sentence to express themselves? Good paragraphs, um, capitalization, all of the things that are necessary, or are they just kind of scribbling through it and that's eh, good enough? In that case, then, they may need to slow down and do a little bit better of a job. If you're doing, if you're doing like Jacob's Algebra, I mean, that's no joke, right? You're looking at at least a minute of problem and there's a fair amount of problems. So that's, that's easily, Jacob's Algebra should take you 45 minutes to an hour. And then there's two more practice sets that you could do. 
Now we have somebody here who works in our IT department, absolutely brilliant. He, he would be a gifted student. He said what the mistake his parents made was he could finish his subjects very quickly. What they tried to do was fill his day in with busy work so that um, they felt better about the fact that he was having to sit at the table for extra time. And finally, they shifted and allowed him to start like preparing to be, you know, for coding or do more hands on activities or preparing for some life skill or studying something more complex. So, you know, let your students study for the real estate license, let them study for an insurance license or or something much larger. Um, if that's the case, rather, if they're if they know the work and they're passing the test and they're doing level high school level work to their ability, then then that's awesome. But, you know, and the other thing I would say is sometimes I, I wouldn't want anyone to think that our basic four is everything you need for school. Basic four is the basics, but you still need to have art and music. You need health. You need electives. You need you know, there's more to to school. That's like, here's the foundations of what Masterbooks has available at this time. But I would certainly add some more courses into the work. Um, you know, and the tests really reveal that. When, when he takes a test, if he's scoring, you know, 90% or above on the test and he's getting it, and his essays look amazing, then you know. If he's getting 70s, well, then he probably needs to spend a little bit more time investing himself in schoolwork. Tabitha said, biggest question, <coughs> will you be bringing Master Books stickers um, to Nashville for identifying other moms of Master Books? She said, just teasing, can't wait to see all the things this week and meet new people. That is such a good idea, Tabitha. It is such a good idea, and I'm so upset. Somebody else recommended that last year, and I wanted to do it, and I'm so upset that I don't have the time to do it. Um, yeah, I think I think what we're going to ask Moms and Master Books to do is to turn their shirts inside <laughs> out. And so if you're in the hall and you see another mom and her shirt is inside out, you know that she's a Master Books mom. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, Kelly said, I have a 15-year-old boy who has struggled with. He likes to cut corners mm. and struggles to stay focused. What you just talked about being bogged down with technology and can't concentrate made so much sense to me. I hadn't thought of it that way, so thank you. This was a light bulb moment for me. I needed to hear this today. Kelly, it's a light bulb moment for me because as an adult, this stupid little device that we've all come to know and love so well is actually consuming it's consuming us and it's causing our brains to rewire in a way that's dangerous. And then the future, uh, I just finished a beautiful book on this. Um, in the future, the people that are actually going to bring value to the culture are people who can actually sit down and do work rather than having to pick up their phone every, you know, five minutes. Great. Lisa said, how does the new Algebra 2 line up with elementary algebra? My son is just finishing algebra soon, the elementary algebra. It's soon. meant to transition from, um, Kate has written that so that it transitions from that algebra into the Algebra 2. So I said, after what level of math should you start algebra? My fifth grader is finishing up God's Design for Life. We just started master books this year. What would be a good science to start sixth grade next year? There's so first so the math algebra. question we go, um, Math 5, Math 6, Principles of Math 1, Principles of Math 2, and Algebra ninth grade. What She's was it? finishing up God's Design, her 5th mm -hmm. grader is, so what would be a good science to start for 6th grade? She said there's so many options. Yeah, I would go more towards interest. If she's interested in kind of earth science and that type of thing, go that direction of the sea, soil, sky. If she's interested in animals, go with zoology. That's a phenomenal course, zoology is. I would go that way. Or if she's interested in, in medicine and doctors and stuff like that, go with elementary anatomy. That's a great course. We're doing that with one of our sons this year. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of go towards the interest that your student has. Let learning be fun. Um, Amber said, can you expand more on the rumors of language lessons one and the release and the preview release? Preview will be available tomorrow. The, there will actually, if you're going to Nashville, there will be a full sample there that you can look at uh, at the convention. Uh, it should be available for pre-order. The digital should be available for order. Let me correct that. It should be available to order late next week, hopefully. Uh, the physical book will be available in four to six weeks. So uh, as soon as it arrives back from the printer, and we're trying to put pushes on printers, um, but it looks phenomenal. This is a good question. Vicky said, starting Master Books, going to start with America's Story 2, would you recommend getting Timeline for the first one just as a reference? 
So she's starting in two. So should she get the level one timeline along with level two timeline to have? Are they independent? I mean, you could, you could, but I don't. If you did and you just kind of built the timeline there and then put some of the pieces in, it might help you have context. I think it might be a good idea. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but it would be fun to be able to say we're studying, you know, this in world history and the Civil War was followed back to, <coughs> you know, Daniel Boone type thing. Um, Bethany said, we are currently using a different language arts curriculum, and I want to know what compares to it so we can switch over to master books for next year. And then in parentheses, she put learning language arts through literature, fourth grade, it's the orange book. I would go with language lessons for living education, and I would take the placement test on that. Um, Eva said, these spelling words are quite advanced for first grade. What is the reasoning behind including them? So some of the words that she gave in the picture were pie, tried, died, field, chief. Um, yield, That's in basic friend. language skills, which is actually being replaced by language lesson for living education level one. Um, some of those may have actually been adapted a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't know. I'm not the author of the course. I don't know the logic on the basic language skills, but I don't know that those are in the, the update language lessons. Patricia said, will there be level seven and level eight for language lessons for living education? Y'all are greedy. <laughs> Our mom has been, I haven't seen my mom in a couple of years writing these courses, so y'all can just wait, okay? <laughs> wow, we have emotion. Um, yeah. That was, that was a Britney rant. <laughs> They're not as eloquent as Randy rants. Well, I know, yeah, at this point, Kristen had committed to write up to level six, and now that one and six are done, the complete series is done, I don't know that she's ready to commit to writing level seven at this time. I think that there's a couple of other things that she's probably, um, <clears throat> you know, she's committing to first, but it may be a possibility down the road. Down the road. <laughs> Lori <laughs> said, if you don't use writing strands and choose to use the Jensen series, do you really just use one of the workbooks each year and grant a full English credit each year? With some of them. You know, um, the punctuation isn't a full year. I think we may have some marketing that has it as a full year. That's more of a supplement, like a half semester or something that you would use to complement the others. Uh, format writing, grammar, and vocabulary. Vocabulary actually is a year and a half, uh, or it can be used as a year and a half. That, that can be kind of intense. So I think in that year, we're good. That's, they would count as, as one credit. She said, and what about writing instruction for up to 12th grade when you do format writing? Any advice appreciated? Well, yeah, format writing has writing instruction in it. Lisa said, my ninth grader is completing World Story 1 and 2 this year and loves to read. Should we use American History next year or World Story 3? This year I added in more literature for him because he reads so quickly and loves it. He finished The, shine, the Shining Companion. <laughs> the Shining Company in a week and Angela had it planned out for eight weeks. Hello. So what's the question? She's wondering if she should use American History next year or World Story 3. I would, if you've been in World Story 1 and 2, I would go to World Story 3. I would, I think World Story 3 is an important course. Kissery said, do you have any lab science that is very light in math? My daughter, um, has, I don't know how you pronounce that, dyscalculia. Dyscalculia. And math is a huge struggle. Yeah, I, I mean, the math um, in applied engineering, I think, would be good. So um, I, would, I would look at applied engineering and, um, let's see, the, the labs for that are more hands-on. So that would be one that I would, I would probably look at doing. Um, I don't think, yeah, the others, we have courses that aren't all lab-based. So you can kind of go heavier into some of the other ones and not have as many intense labs, and you could even create a it that way. Hey, Brandon Taylor Pratt just joined. What's up, fam? <laughs> you are all kinds of distracted today. I'm um, sorry, I'm losing my voice. It should be a fun weekend. Leah said, I've been doing logic um, of English with our kids. We just started a week ago with the first grade suggested kit for Master Books, and are loving it, except that I think 
Um, we will stick with logic of English or phonics until we are done with the foundation set. Do you have any ideas which le language lessons for living education book he will be ready for? I'm thinking he will be six when we're done with that and just won't know where to jump in. At that, I would be, I would look at the placement test. Um, if it's a comprehensive re foundation or comprehensive phonics program, probably going to be ready to go into um, level if he's six, he would probably be ready to go into two, but I would defer to the placement test. Tiffany said, after your session on hands-on students, I have a question. For argument's sake, say mm -hmm. your state does not have graduation requirements and there are no prerequisites for the community college your hands-on child plans to attend. Would you just let them pick from the high school science courses or still have them get the standard biology, chemistry, and physics in case they change their plans? I would tailor it to the student. So, I mean, if you take advanced pre-med for a bike and you do life science origins, you do the astronomy, um, you do general science, you're still going to have four high school level science courses. Maybe not the traditional biology, chemistry, physics, but you're still going to have um, a pretty good grasp of science and the world around them. So, I don't know that I would, um, you know force a student through, but depending on the student, they may actually enjoy the biology or the chemistry. So I would, I would kind of bring them into it, get some previews, let them look at it and, and let them help pick. That used to help you. Usually this is one thing that Kristen does in Nashville. She'll take the boys around and, <clears throat> you know, there may be some solutions that don't have or don't work student and she'll go to the different booths and let the students listen to the to the sales pitch that we all love to give and then um, look at the materials and then pick what they want once they commit to that it's pretty hard pride wise to say for them I to back out hate <laughs> this course yeah um sarah ashley said will you do a short video at the conference this weekend so we can all celebrate even if we can't be there I try to. Sometimes signal. Last year, if you were in Nashville, right, there was a cheerleading competition. There was like a thousand cheerleaders and all their families in the hall next to us. It wasn't typically the two crowds that you put together in a homeschool conference. And like they were all on their cell phones and cell service was nothing. Like we had a hard time even running registers. That's not happening this year. We know the NRB is going to be there, which is the National Religious Broadcast Conference. Uh, there's not a national cheerleading competition. So we don't have to worry about that. So if I have signal, all that, that was a long story, all that to say, yes, I will broadcast live from this booth as long as I have good enough signal. Awesome. Ashley said, is there a history unit that you think an eighth grader and a fourth grader should do, could do together? History? Yeah, you could do world. I think you could do world. Start with the ancients um, and... and uh, you know, maybe the fourth grader, you don't require as much, but you still build timelines and see how much of, of the work they can do. Can they, can they narrate back to you what's happening? Uh, sometimes we've done this where the older student would actually teach the younger student, and that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, they do the reading out loud and kind of the instruction and kind of run the class. That's really good for teaching leadership and service and all those things. Uh, Lisa Locke said, hello, finally made it to a live video. Welcome, we're glad you're here. Absolutely. Daphne said, does the new language lessons for Living Education 1 combine foundations, phonics, and the basic language skills? No, foundation phonics is the first half of the year. Language lessons 1 is the second half of the year. So you teach them how to read, then you build on that and teach them more about reading, and then also developing um, the writing skills and all of that in, in grade 1. Lizzie said, will language lessons level one be similar to basic language skills or will it be completely different? Wondering if I should purchase it or not since we already have basic language skills. I would definitely recommend that you upgrade to language lessons for living education. Um, basic language skills has been good. This is much better. Um, will the basic language skills curriculum site go on sale in the near future? Probably will go out of print, basic language skills. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the language lesson one uses the same three books, 
So if you bought a lot of basic language skills and you bought those three books, like Is It a Special Door, Not Too Small at All, and Charlie and Trike, those three books are still <coughs> part of Language Lessons 1. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to rebuy those books. <coughs> Sorry. Nikki said, what are the math options for 11th and 12th grade? I know the high grade math options can be for multiple grades, but I think there are just two that are geared more towards 9th and 10th graders, unless I've missed something. Yeah, we have Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2, which should come out this year. And then, so those would be the three. We wouldn't have a 12th grade math at this point. Alicia said, this is our first year using Master Books. We switched from a more, a much more spiral intensive learning program. I used that for kindergarten one and two, and my daughter pretty much hated it. But now my daughter is done with all of her school for first grade using Master Books within 30 to 45 minutes a day, and I feel like maybe I should be challenging her more. What makes the um, long... What takes the longest is probably mathematics. I'm just so used to the intense approach. I was raised on a curriculum we were using in kindergarten, um, and I used it my whole life as a homeschool student. So now I'm just used to school taking literally all day. Is this normal? Or should I maybe add in some supplementation with electives? I am thankful that she enjoys school now and that it's not a fight to get it done, but I want to make sure she's getting all she needs as well. Without a quiz or test at the end of the books, I find it hard to know how she's doing. I would recommend watching the last couple of teaching tips, Thursday's teaching tips. They should be on YouTube and they should be in the, in the Facebook group as well. Um, we kind of address the philosophy of early childhood education and, and then building on that from there. So looking at, um, I would probably say, you know, at that age, there's a lot more you can do. Book work should only be a small portion of the schoolwork. And that's curriculum is a tool. And then building on that, physical activity and drawing and playing and creativity, those are all part of education. Experience, when our brain has experience, then we take the academics and we build on that experience and we make connections in the brain and we develop the brain holistically. So. Um, Christy said, is there a plan for math lessons for living education level 7? If not, does level 6 prepare for principles? Again, y'all are so greedy. I haven't seen Angelo Odell in forever, y'all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't see Angelo Odell much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably me because I called you greedy, but I mean it in the most loving way possible. Okay. I promise. Um, Christy said, is there a plan for math lessons for living education level 7? If not, does level six prepare for principles? At this point, no, because we have principles of mathematics, which really works to transition the student and prepare them for high school mathematics. Um, Rachel said, I'm wanting to start my son in kindergarten with a non-master books cursive program, but I'm also additionally looking at your Simply K books and Math K book. Uh, would I be better to skip the Simply K since from the preview, it has so much teaching of print, or would my son still benefit from the other skills presented in Simply K? Well, Simply K and Stepping Stones are developmental programs. They're not academic programs. So I think that there would probably be some, some benefit to it. Um, I'm not sure the educational model that you're using that does cursive in kindergarten, um, but that may be a different approach to training the brain. I'm, I'm not sure. So um, usually we wouldn't teach cursive until after they had developed their ability to write and print and then cursive. So you'd probably want to just kind of look at that. It's um, the model that we would follow would be more handwriting up until, you know, second grade or something like that. April said, will language lessons for living education one still have them reading one sentence of not too small is really right. It's not too small at all. I think, yeah, I think it's kind of the same format. She said the description looks like they will be reading different words and stories, maybe. So it still incorporates all the old books for... Yeah, but I think that there may be some living stories written into it as well. Okay. No, um, I'm not 100% certain. C Family Homeschool said, will you all please do a video or our author interview about America's Story, or do you have one already? I can't find one. I'd love to listen to a discussion about it. Absolutely. I'd love to do that. Angela, we need to do a video about um, America's Story. I think we've done one in the past, mm -hmm. but uh, be happy to do it again because I think we've worked at some upgrades and the timelines and stuff like that. So, yeah, Angela, we'll do some videos. It's time anyways. It's that time of year to do some videos. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Angela said, I'm trying to figure out where to put my will-be second grader who does Horizons Math and Phonics. Also, my will-be first grader who's been doing... Um, what is MFW? Which one is that? My phone My phone is really... I always do that. Kindergarten, but I'm having to supplement because he is flying through it. I would love to do their science and history together. Please help me. Also, is there a video to look inside Stepping Stones? My four-year-old wants to be with the big kids. Um, Stepping Stones, will the preview will be available here in another week or so. Uh, we will do a video on that. Carrie Bailey will be doing helping me do a video on that and Simply K because it's very important. And um, as far as the other courses, I would really recommend taking the readiness test for math and language. And you know, if you're if you're if you've been pretty aggressive in the academic pursuit, um, you know, then it's I think that's that's important. Um, Nicole said, "New homeschool mom here. What exactly is a good schedule for a kindergartner? I cannot talk today." <laughs> What exactly is a good schedule for a kindergartner? My son will be five in September. We are doing only Simply K right now. He loves it, but is only interested for about 20 minutes a day and then wants to play after, so I don't push him. But I wonder when is an appropriate time to start Math K and Foundations Phonics and Adventures in Creation? Between five and six years old? I would tease him with it. Put it out there. Let him see if he's interested. Talk about it. Don't, don't. Don't burden him, just let him see. He'll lead the way in that, right? Maybe talk about how neat it is to know how to do math and numbers and, and let's count, you know, why is it value? And just see when he bites on that little bait and then begin, um, begin kind of feeding as much as you can. Uh, if you push too early because you want it, right? Especially at those ages, those ages are so critical. And I, I, if you watch the, the teaching tips and, that I've done in the last couple of weeks, like Finland, where they don't even start school until grade seven, but they have a lot of play and creativity that they focus on in their preschools because that's where they gain experience and the desire for knowledge. So, Awesome. We'll do a couple more. Sure. Um, I have not, or she said, I have heard a lot of people worried about spelling. I have not even gotten there because I have a kindergartner. Is a spelling program something I need to research into for them, or is Masterbooks spelling covered enough? I think um, that was in the app, or was that? That was over in the app. Yep. Uh, Anna posted a video that she did about the spelling. I would highly look at that. Uh, in writing strands, I personally like the way the author taught writing strands. It's let's practice the words we need, not necessarily 50 words every week. But um, every, spelling is... Teaching how to read, spelling, and math, they, they can be very hotbed topics because you can have educational philosophies and it kind of depends on who discipled you in the philosophy that you're doing and, and then what values you hold to with the curriculum you have. Spelling can be one of those. Um, you know, over the years we've learned some kids are just good spellers naturally and some aren't. But thankfully, we have um, spell check, and we have we have we live in a digital age where spelling is much easier than it used to be. Um, but yeah, I, spelling is incorporated in language lessons. It's just done a little differently, um, and I think there's videos on that as well, and plenty of help in the groups if you need it. <coughs> uh, Christina said, "What other history courses do you have other than American history? We are having a hard time with the course." Um, the American history by Stobaugh, if that's the high school history. Um, we do have some other courses like the history of religious liberty, um, that you could do. There's an upgrade coming to the American history and the world history this year. And I think that those will, those will fix some of the confusion. There are videos on Stobaugh that I've done in the past that explain what the intent of the course is in bigger thinking and expanded thinking. And so you may want to um, watch that course or ask in the group because some moms that didn't understand it before kind of got it. And then their kids started doing a lot better with it once they understood, oh, this is different. You know, we did ACE. Read the paragraph, write the write the answer, study for the test, get an 80, move on. 
that if you're coming from that type of paradigm, coming into an open-ended question, what do you think about the world when this was going on? It can be a struggle. Yeah. All right. Well, don't lose your voice convention. Okay. Amanda said, uh, "Will there be more than words three and four? Uh, I, there's more than words three is in the in the proposal phase with the editors. I haven't seen yet that it's gotten to a project phase. So um, I think it's that's kind of where where it is right now. I don't have any dates or anything yet that it's made a catalog." Um, question number two, daughter is in a phase where she doesn't want to do the coloring pages and or drawing pictures, but loves go doing out art outside of the schoolwork. Do I push her to color the pages and draw pictures or just let her continue not doing them? Can you, can you do it in a way that's, you know, hey, we have to, we have to do a little bit of coloring. If we do the coloring, then we're going to go outside as soon as we do and give a reward if she completes this. <clears throat> not necessarily because she needs to sit and color, but maybe just to create the discipline of sometimes parts of school aren't as much fun and others are. Mm -hmm. We want to have as much fun in school as possible. But, you know, even in my day at work, while I have a lot of fun, there are parts of my work day that aren't as much fun. And I still have to work through that. So um, as long as she's capable of it, is, is can you kind of growth hack a little bit and find ways that she'll tolerate it, grow in the skill, reward her big when she does what you want, um, because we like rewards as people. We just do. Last question. Lisa said, does Adventures in Creation have more experiments than God's Design for Life beginners? My son mm. likes God's Design for Life, but really wants more hands-on activities. I think Adventures in Creation has like a weekly experiment. Right? So yeah. that would be like 36 weeks. Uh, if you want to see the experiments, go to our YouTube channel, Master Books, and look for Science with Delaney. There's a whole playlist. And uh, adorable little girl that's doing that course does the experiments. And it's just, it's fun to see the hands on activities and what she's learning. Mm -hmm. I've actually learned watching it. I, Me too. Yeah. Awesome. Is that it? Those were the last three questions, yeah. Whoa, awesome. He's got to save his voice for the convention this weekend. I'll lose it by Friday. There's no way. You're already The, the convention it. hall is so loud, and you're just talking nonstop for hours on end. So I may have to learn sign language in the next 24 hours. Okay. Awesome. Hey, guys, God bless. If you're in Nashville, please stop and see us. Let us know that you're in the group. And... Um, you know, we, we want you to post pictures and, and uh, you guys are family, right? We, like, we see your names all the time. We, we know the struggles you have, the wins you have, what your pets look like from Pets of Master Books. I mean, you guys, it's part of our experience. And um, if you're at the hall, we, we just, we really want to meet you and connect with you because uh, we appreciate being part of this tribe and the ability to serve you guys. So, okay. all right. Well, hey, God bless you guys. Have a fantastic week. There won't be a teaching tips, but I will do my best to broadcast live from the conference a couple times this weekend. All right, guys. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.